Let's see. Can you guys see me? Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Some think I'm a little nuts, but you know, for about uh, 500 days, I've been doing the sauna and ice barrel. It's been really great. The rinse repeat for the, the day, the week, the month, the year, the quarter, you know, and um, last year I had a fever brewing and instead of uh, just, you know, let it happen, I did the same thing and pretty much got rid of it in a day. So I did it yesterday. I have no fever, no COVID. I tested and uh, I'm here um, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So for those of you new to the site, okay, let me bring this over. Can you guys see me? How many fingers am I holding up? There you go. How many fingers do I have? <laughs> Ten. <laughs> anyway, uh, so it's good that you can see, and you can see the charts, and um, you know, I'm gonna go through a little bit of, of, of you know what you can see on the site. So, <laughs> so if you if I put this over here, you can see yourselves, right? Because now you're on the screen. So you can see me. You can see my positions. You can see the overall site. So um, I'm just going to let you know a little bit about the process. So I get up every day around 4.30, 4.45. I look at what's happening over overseas, um, see what's happening in Europe, see what's happening in Japan, see what's happening in China. You know, it, it, it matters differently on different days. You know, I want to see if Europe was tracking the United States because we had a strong move uh, on Friday and Europe was higher. Japan, <laughs> 35 year highs, crazy all time highs. Good for them. You know, they had a 20 year channel also. And China's still weak. You know, China stocks have been horrible. And, um, you know, so no bounce there yet. And um, I actually have some options for March, but no stock. <laughs> I make a joke if I had a dollar for every time somebody told me to buy Baba, I'd have a few hundred dollars, but my trading account would be blown up <laughs> because everyone wants to catch a falling knife, which is not the way you make money in the market. We have a very strategic approach actively to net money because most people that are here right now we have 464 people um trade for a living so it's not a joke right we have to do the right setup we have to honor our stops we have to think clearly we have to execute we have to have multiple plans and do this right if we don't do this correctly we don't make money monthly and quarterly and then we don't get paid if we don't get paid <laughs> chances are you're gonna be looking for a new job in three to six months so i take this very seriously because i've been doing it since 1997 and I've had awesome years. I've had average years. I've had a few, you know, down years. Rarely do I have, you know, a, a flat quarter or two. Um, but I'm pretty consistent. And uh, although I could probably make more pushing the envelope a little bit, my job is to be your ch chief strategic officer. Your, my job is to if you go up here, you know, to start in the morning. Let's, let's go and turn. Let's see. Hold on. Let's backtrack a little bit. So if you go up here, just to show you like how, what you could be doing in the morning, you know, while, while I'm, you know, getting my day together. So as I said, when I do all that, I get in around 6.15, I do a brief 6.30 club, which has been great because I give out a few thoughts to a few thousand people and then those who have been able to make some money with the 6.30 club. They become alpha members, they become contributors, they become part of the community. Same way, you know, run all access, it all depends. So what I do every morning is I start right here, like with the with the SP. I give my thoughts, I very precise with the levels, and try and give you what I'm thinking. And usually the SP is a little bit of macro, you know, kind of what happened around the world. You know, Japan's extended its rally, China got hit again. You know, um, SP futures are doing this day four, one, two, three, four. You know, I have day count rules where usually I, you want to buy on a day one, end day two, trim day three, be happy you're still long on day four. You know, not really buy day four. Sometimes you can, but rarely will you make money consistently buying day four over time. Usually it's a better fade or just a better, hey, I'm taking a step back. So then I go, you know, to the, I usually the cues which I talk about what we've been doing. I show the same kind of chart, you know, talk about what I what I have on, you know, because I have, you know, all these tech names on, I had to have some kind of hedge. So for me, instead of shorting the cues, because we just broke out, I, I faded some some cues higher, which you can see right here for Wednesday, the 425s. The cues themselves are, you know, 423. So to me, I'm like, okay, I can take a buck 50. And if you open lower, 
they'll suck out some premium. Um, but, uh, you know, if we open higher, I still have room and then I'll make money on my longs and maybe I can even double dip on my, on my hedges and my longs just the way to, you know, keep it. So anyway, um, so, you know, that was the cues and I go through all the sectors. So I'm not going to go through each one of them, but it's your job in the morning while I'm listening to music and doing all of the charts to read through the sectors and get a, and figure out what it is I'm saying, what my thought process is, so you could align it with yours in some capacity. And then Alexa off. Hey Alexa, off. And then I usually go to mega cap tech, like Apple. Uh, I you know point out things that have happened because they're gonna happen again. This was a double bottom. Some guys got along there. Some were even in options from the week before, which didn't seem right, but. You know, but if you do options, sometimes you anticipate. Sometimes you get lucky. If you wait for something to happen, like when Bank of America upgraded it, I bought that day and I said that day in the morning, like you could buy verse 185.84 because that's the pro gap. And then you had a, a great move through the moving averages, uh, follow through on Friday. And now today, you know, Apple's up 70 cents. So how does the VTF help you or help some? If I'm sitting in Apple, uh, is anyone, by the way, is anyone else lagging? I could type too, and I could speak. Um, if I'm in Apple, from Thursday, this stock, and, and I could hold, and you see it green on the screen from, from Thursday into today, I'm hopefully bringing confidence that you guys could be long Apple for, the, for an active trade. Then this morning, I've trimmed some. So people are like, oh, Red Dog's had Apple for three days. He's getting... He's getting lighter. So that's part of the whole thing. You know, and then I go through all of them. So same type of thing. So there's your Apple. I, by the way, I have a bunch of level twos down there. And then Microsoft, you know, another great <laughs> situation for us. Um, you know, two weeks ago on Twitter, I actually even said it's my biggest concentration. It's basically been on the virtual trade floor since. And uh, Took it home long. On Friday, I'm like, hey, guys, I think it will be over 400. Um, and uh, P.S., uh, as you can see, I've already trimmed some Microsoft, and it seems like it's fading. So some might say, hey, it's extended. Just get the hell out. Sometimes if I get out and it keeps going, it's hard to get in, but who cares? You know, if you made your money, you made your money also. And then, uh, you know, and then all of a sudden, there's Netflix and Tesla. And I like to talk about things that happen. Because again, these all meant something then, things that we outlined when it happened. So if you comes, if it happens again, you see it, right? I was I was thinking, you know, Tesla could play catch up, and then all of a sudden that day happened, and then that confirmed by trading below the eight day. And since then, I've traded it maybe two, three times. Mm -hmm. It was a distraction; it didn't work. You could have made a little, you know, little bit here and there, here and there, you know. Um, but again, not where the action was. A little red dog reversal on Friday. But again, the place to have been on Friday was NVIDIA, SMCI, maybe even Amazon, Google, Apple, uh, Micron, you know, whatever it was. This was not the place to be. But if you traded and you, and you bought a verse to low and then you come in today, hey, you know, it was up two bucks. Now it's up the whole 15 cents. That's why we stay away from it. If you took home SMCI, that's different. Or if you took home, you know, some of the ones that really had a breakout with strength, it's a little different. So anyway, I go through all those. So, and you can read it. You can look at the chart, look at the pivots, read it. That's your job in the morning. And then I go from that to um, some of the semis. So uh, Michael has them a little out of order. I don't know why, because he's a one-man show sometimes. AMD, you know, last real trade was through 151. I had that chart out there. So it goes through 151. You can grab it and go. Now today, NVIDIA probably, I mean, AMD is probably a fade. It's already been going back and forth. 174 and a quarter is the pivot. If it gets above, it comes back below. It maybe could short versus that area. Um, so I, I, I literally, from about 6.50 till about 8 o'clock, I'm doing all these charts, which are up on, you know, up here for you to look at. And then I, I tried to put some different charts out there that, that are percolating, right? Snow wasn't where the action was last week, which it wasn't. Um, but summer long versus 180 which is this gap for those who traded. Some people have a little bit of a tier on waiting for the next tier. And this is something that if money, you know, if all of a sudden the semis want to rest and rebuild or some of the megas and they want to come to something like this, hey, 
you know, it, it's not all extended. It's up to and change. So it's be hard to buy, hopefully you'll own a little, or you'll, you'll see. Um, but again, it's like a new setup. Adobe also, a new setup. So I try, I try and put some new setups up there also. Snow could be new. Um, you know, Palatier. Okay, first time I posted this chart in a while. I know I, I played some options, but then finally I'm like, yeah, you know what? A lot of guys have been talking about it on the, <coughs> on the Alpha team. We had a really nice strategy back here. That and got out perfectly pretty much on that red dog reversal sell same candle that, that i showed you in tesla um and now it's got a nice little lower wedge and hey maybe it can go so that's why i'm long it but i always trim a little bit when it when a gap is in my favor so even though i do think it could be higher than where it is right now today you know with it up 40 cents 2.4 percent i'm always going to trim some so if it comes in i could buy more or if it shows me the volumes there and small caps are getting some attention, I'll get even bigger. But I always try and net money when it gaps in my favor because that's how you make a living. Um, IWM moving, it's all right, Tracy. So, you know, that's good. That'll help some of the small caps up $1.80. If you guys remember, with the small caps in the, in the, in the, in the sector area, I talked about last week buying 187, 188s for some of you who wanted exposure there. And now, when I was into that, some people, you know, in the, on uh, public Twitter, like, wow, great call. I was like, you either could go here or here. That was your spot. Didn't get below it. And now it's coming into this area. I'd be trimming that too. So there's lots of ways to use, you know, the alpha team for confidence, to for strategies, for multiple scenarios, for just a little fun and love and lifestyle. You know, we're, I've been doing this for a long time. There are a lot of people on here have been doing it for a long time. Right, I, right now, whoever's been a member of the Alpha team, talk, you know, just say how many years you've been here, if, if you don't mind. Let's see. Nina's been here for three. Sweeney for three. <laughs> and think since 2024, three, four, five, one, three. Uh, two, second year, third year. Tracy's been here for 12. Wow. One, six, three months. I use mostly EMAs on my chart. I know people use SMAs, but I don't want it to be too noisy. So a lot of people have been doing this also. But also people will tell you that it's not always all sunshines and rainbows. You know, we have active sequences where we make a ton. And then we have times when, you know, we're getting paper cuts galore and it's been really hard and we just try and deal with it all together. You know, 2020, most of us made four times our average year and made us a lot of money, you know, and then uh, 2000, I think 21, we did a double my average year. Then 2023, you know, I uh, was probably was probably a, a less than average year, believe it or not. Uh, Freddie LRCX, it's probably up a little bit too much going into earnings, but we'll, we could we could check that out. So you go back here, so LRCX, uh, it's already had its earnings move. Two different gaps you know again it's gonna be hard like joey just said joey's you have a few traders in here it's like they're probably gonna run all these into earnings and then whatever they announce is not gonna be enough but um again i'm trying to go through more of uh more of the process here so by 8 10 8 15 i go do the morning call for weather all access and um and then i come back around 8 45 9 o'clock and then sometimes i go through some charts here but most of the charts that I go through here, I've already all went out, went through all up here. And be, I'm be honest, I don't like doing things five times, you know. But anyway, I, I do because that's my job. But don't be lazy. Look at the charts, look at the language, and figure out what I'm doing and how I'm doing, and take some lessons on moving averages and chart patterns to understand why. All right, Sam. Sam was actually really good at a lot of things on the site, you know. Again, yeah, SMCI. <laughs> Yeah, look at that move. 357, 357. You had to be fast on Friday. Now, if you were fast and you took it home, you are getting rewarded. Huge. 450, just like that. Can you buy this today? Probably not. But can you short it today? <laughs> At some point, there might be a Q trade. But I know some people were trying to be cute and short it on Friday. And I'm like, it's day one breakout. Probably better to be buying the dip. If you bought the dip on Friday and took it home, you made a lot more money 
than finding a five, six, seven dollar short. Just saying. The right trade is usually going to pay you over time through your career. The Q trade, yeah, it's good for cash flow in certain situations because we're active and we're professionals. Chances are it's not what's going to make you a living. Unfortunately, I wish I had the <laughs> I wish I had the what's it called, the open house last week, because last week lots of things triggered. And this week we're gonna to have to probably be a little bit more patient because it's gonna be harder, in my humble opinion. But if you remember, two weeks ago, you know, NVIDIA was the focus sector wise and it had an awesome breakout. Right now it's at 600, which is close to the measured move. You cannot be buying NVIDIA today. Even if it goes to 610, you probably can't be buying NVIDIA today. You missed it. You missed this entry. You missed it when it went above 553 after the pause. You missed it. Does that mean you have to short it? No, but could there be a short today? Yeah, there could be a short today. First the level, if you see a divergence, if you guess, you're like, if I'm, if you're like, I'm going to short from 600 to 620. And I'm covering 576 later this week. That's a that's a strategy in your head that the market didn't confirm yet. So you have to wait for that to happen. Anyway, it could happen. Or gets to 606, pulls back to 604. Futures go, it doesn't go, has a negative divergence. Like, ah, I'm going to short 604 versus 606. I'm risking $2 for a stock that just went 100. That's how you define it, in my humble opinion. You know, but then once that happened, we we're like, hey, maybe SMCI goes, maybe Vago goes, maybe Micron goes. Arm, you know, Micron was mine, you know, and so far it's opening above 87. Those options are probably up three times. Don't need to be in all of them. You don't need to kiss all the babies to make a living. This was probably slow and steady, and that was something that I figured was something I can go with. It's at 88.79. Congratulations if you're still in it. The way you can see my options is right here, and you can see that. Micron options, which I did buy pretty well, perfectly timed. I trimmed some, trimmed some, and still in some, and I'll probably get rid of that today. Anyway, um, and then you had other guys who were talking about ARM. ARM I played also pretty well back here. You know, this was a great day. I was in it. That was a great day. I think I was done with it here. And I took a little, 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 carved a little piece out. And then that was your reversal. Some guys are like, hey, Red Dog, look at the Red Dog reversal here. Which <laughs> there was a nice Red Dog reversal, and then you had three days. You guys know what a Red Dog reversal is, right? Stock was uh, 74, came all the way down. If it was going to go down to the 65 area, what did it have to do? Get below and stay below 67.55. Instead, it went below and reclaimed it, and then gave you a nice move, if you were looking there. So lots of things I'm talking about, lots of concepts that I've developed in 25 years that a lot of you know because you're active traders who trade probably for a living if you don't <laughs> all this could be over your head so if it's over your head you better take things slow anyway um so what usually happens then once i come back after we go over some charts and you know you see what i've done already and again so for all i've done this morning is trim some apple trim some amazon trim some google trim some microsoft i didn't touch msos trim the little pilots here and obviously you can't do anything with options didn't buy a thing and if you took those things home along with me, <coughs> you're up money, you have a good head start on the day. How do you know? Or if it, well, Stafford, go put your little cursor over Apple right now. Put your cursor over Apple. What do you see? At 738, what did I do? Put it over Amazon. Sold twice. Yeah, sold some. And if you if you see if you log into the day and you see me long. Okay, then you know that I came in long, so I'm long and it's up and I'm taking some profits. So you can see when a flash is red and green. So, okay, so just say right now, if I wanted to just, you know, sell some just because why not anyway. Watch, watch, watch Amazon. Hold on. Oops, hold on. So, oops, hold on. Let me take these down. By the way, I have like six level twos. On one screen that helps me to see the movement of the names out of one of my six screens so what you'll see is when you see something happen like right now i have, I have a lot of amazon's of my biggest positions coming in so if i if i reduce more um you'll see it flash red so that shows the the, the, the blinking and the reducing capiche <laughs> um 
If I buy something, you'll see it. And if I all of a sudden get out of Amazon, it'll go from long to flat. Do you provide it? No, I don't type. You guys see it flash, and you've read the charts. You know the language. You know the strategy. You know the if them. It's not about me force feeding you trades. It's about you having a process and either thinking the same or not, or wanting to do that stock or a different stock. Sometimes I'll have again up here all of these setups, and there might be thirty of them. I only might play four of them. Everyone else might be playing a different four, or a different four, or we're all doing it together. You know. There's like, I did not play SMCI on Friday. I listed the chart three times that week and just had other things going on, other longs, other, and guys made serious money there. And they said, thank you, Red Dog, for saying that 357 was it. They went with it and they made money with it. And for me, that's my job, to provide it as a strategy for you. Sometimes I'll trade it, sometimes I won't. Again, I am the chief strategic officer. I'm a founding partner. I am sometimes away from my desk. I'm doing webinars, I'm doing spaces. To Wednesday, I'm going on Fox Business, you know. So I'm here as a guide. I'm like the guiding hand. And every now and then, obviously, I, I trade for a living. So the only way I get ahead financially on the home front is by getting paychecks quarterly. Yes, do I get paid from the business in some capacity? I do. I, I founded this company with, you know, with Sean and a bunch of others. But really, the way I get ahead is by trading. Sometimes I write better than I trade, meaning my note and my charts, because I'm not doing it. I've, I'm distracted. Sometimes. You know, I trade better than I write. Usually when both are aligned, I'm feeling pretty good. But sometimes it's hard to do everything. No, to, you know, today's today's a hard day to enter anything. And as you can see, the, the spies are coming in a little bit. You know, you could, I have this other chart that I put up, you know, which you could see the morning action. So you could see how it's kind of coming lower a little bit. Um, good job, Zahor. What does short stand for? You'll see it on the short side. So I'm short the Qs, 425 calls, and I'm short the SPY, 485s. At the end of the day, I sold that premium to collect it. That was my hedge to everything that I have over here. Instead of shorting the Qs, which I'd be down $2 on, I shorted the 425, the 485s for like a buck fifty. So that means... 486.50 is my average price if I let it convert me short the queues for Wednesday. So that was my better way, just in case we open lower. Everyone's like, oh, it's a gamma squeeze. You're going to be down 20 handles on, on Monday. This is bullshit. This is crap. I'm like, all right, well, things broke out. I'm not just shorting these indices here. Maybe I'll short some premium higher just as a hedge because I have all these longs on. So that's, that's how I do a portfolio approach. I try and buy things right, add to them, trim some, use my use my tier system, and then when we get a extended unfortunately it's a little crazy because the small caps are so oversold in the center the oscillate is not overbought so i tend to uh you know it's harder to think about hedging and you can get caught <coughs> yeah pretty much so i said hey you know i, I like all these longs still i don't you know but if we're lower i could short you know these options higher i didn't short them in the money i wasn't like a piggy piggy trying to get more premium like hey maybe i could even do both <laughs> maybe you know, I could be long, which I am, sell into strength, maybe even add a little bit to the hedges above because it's for Wednesday, collect premium, and then we never get there. And then I made the money on the hedge and long. You know, but I'm also not doing it in the money. Like I didn't short the 481.50s. I shorted the 485s for a dollar and change. I still have to 486 by Wednesday. I only do it on day four, day five. I don't do it in the beginning of the move. If anything, I, I, would, I should have been long the spies <laughs> and short. That, that would have been really cool if I was long the spies and accused overnight, trying to leverage a gap up and short premium higher. <laughs> but again, it doesn't always happen that way. All right, by the way, right now it's 9.09. You know, sometimes we have a little, uh, what's it called? Um, I don't know. A habit, not a habit. Ritual. <laughs> At nine o'clock, I take a shot of ginger with everybody. Did you do your shot of ginger, Joey? Oh, Joey did his already. He was very nice. He got it for me. Unfortunately, I'm still a little nasally, but listen, you got to power through. I try and power through. Same way if you go out at night, right? On a Thursday night, you better wake up with the like a man. Go out with the boys, wake up like a man on a Friday. 
Just saying for all of you young guys out there and young girls. Cheers. Look at that. Okay, well, this, ooh, that stings a little bit. Thundercoat, for new people, I've been here for almost a year. It's not my profession, but I'm on every day. You will pick up the flow for everyone's process after a bit of time. My challenge is I keep positions longer, so I need to understand Scott. Listen, sometimes there are people that make more in a position than I do. Like when I bought NVIDIA at 505 or 525, I said the measure moves 600. So some people are like, why are you selling some at 540? Why? I'm like, because I'm a trader. I have to actively trade. Like, well, if the measure moves 610, I'm staying until 600. So, but if you're a doctor, a lawyer, a fireman, or whatever, <laughs> you're not looking at it all day long. So you could have been at work and said, wow, this is acting great and sold it today, make 100 points, or maybe I made 40. So there are people here that don't trade for a living. They're just trying to find some really good swing setups, and they're different. You know, two years ago or a year ago is the energy names. You know, in November, December, it was the small caps. Um, then it was, you know, then some mega caps and some semis. So if you don't trade for a living and you're just like, hey, I want to add some money to my to my career and my existing cash flow, then there's a way to do that too. It's not easy, but there's multiple ways to use this platform as something for you. Yes, and at times I'll rant a little bit. You know, I, I will say I'm, I try and be like a moderate in the middle. I don't agree with the far, far left at times or the far, far right at times, you know, but I am a personality also, so I'm going to say how I feel. I'm, um, you know, sometimes people get pissed. They're like, I only want you for Apple. I'm like, well, I don't care. <laughs> then leave the goddamn site. I'm Scott Redler. You know, I'm the chief strategic officer of T3 Live. I'm 51 years old. I'm a dad and, you know, I have a voice and I've been doing this for a long time and I'm going to speak what I think. You know, I got into a little fight with Portnoy on Friday because I was a little pissed off that, you know, back in 2021 when he was day, day by day trader, you know, he was giving out all these stock picks and gambling as if he was giving sports bets on the bills or whatever. And then when the market got tough, he left and so did everyone else. So we stayed. I've seen that so many times since 1997 through the tech bubble bursting in 2000, the financial crisis of 2000, 2008. The pandemic is what started a lot of this because people are like, holy shit, I got to talk to see what Redler's doing because, you know, long-term, short, whatever it is. So, you know, I'm not scared. I'm going to say it like I see it. I'm going to hopefully <laughs> admit when I'm wrong, when I'm wrong and not get louder. Those who get louder when they're wrong hurt people. I won't get louder. I'll get stopped out. I'm not always right, but I'm not going to get louder. You know, I did that with one name for a while and, and it freaking hurt and that was a long time ago. But anyway. This is, you know, this is where we're at. What's the dumbest call in history? Oh, <laughs> you know, I, again, I just, I just feel like it's six months from now he'll be gone, and it's gonna hurt a lot of the the twenty five and thirty and thirty five year olds. And although he's fun, and although he's done some good things, like he's given a lot of money back to small businesses, he's pro Israel, I'm, I'm all those things. I'm not a gazillionaire. I can't bet a million dollars on Michigan, <laughs> you know, because I went there. But you know, there's some things that you don't have to do, you know and use your influence to get people to bet stocks like their friggin' sports games and eventually wind up losing. Here we have a process. Here I try and define my risk. Here we try and net money because it's a serious game here. You guys are here to make a living so you can provide for your family. You know, if we, if we lose here and you lose for multiple months, multiple quarters, chances are you're gone. I don't want to see that happen. Even me, if I lose for multiple quarters, all of a sudden my wife's like, oh, we're bleeding. You know, I don't want to do that either. So we're here to try and make money, try and have some fun, which we do with happy hour and, you know, a little banter back and forth. You know, you got to got to enjoy the day. You got to enjoy the process. That's another thing I was an advocate for. Sometimes I have to leave for for basketball games or for this or for that. But, you know, like, well, I'm here. You're, I'm paying for a subscription for me every second of every day. I'm not here every second of every day. OK, I'm not. OK, I'm here as much as I possibly could be. I will say the majority of my trading is from the morning till about 11.30. You know, I've made a living day trading between 9.30 and 11 because I would take advantage of uh, the opening gaps and price points and looking at relative strength for gap fills and this and that. So the majority of my actively trading is done then. And then I usually put my stops in. I take off for lunchtime and then I have my meetings and do what I have to do. I come back towards the close. I see what else I want to put on or what else I want to take off. And then... Boom, I don't trade futures overnight. 
Um, <laughs> you know, when I leave, usually my, my positions are my positions and I'll figure it out the next day. You know, and these are all the things that I would have done through my life to keep me here, to keep me sane. Have I missed a few things? Yeah. Maybe have I missed a few things at lunchtime by not being here, sitting at my desk, but you know what? Four to five days, probably not. And that's what kept me my, my sanity to do this for this period of time. So for you, you have to figure out what's going to keep your sanity, what's going to keep you profitable, how do you tick, how are you honest with yourself on things you do well and things you need to work on. And you do all those things, and you can make money for a career, for a living, and like Thundercoat said, you know, with, with doing other things while trying to figure out where the action is to, to make money in conjunction with whatever job you're doing. So for now, it's 916. I'm going to let um, Chillo, who also talks on the on the Alpha team, he's one of the main guys. Dan, one of the main guys, you know, that work with T3 besides everyone else that, you know, do a great job helping the community because this is what it's all about. It's about a community. And that's what we breed here is, you know, helping each other and, um, you know, never being jealous over, over what someone else does or has and try not to point fingers. I don't like cynicism. Listen, I'm kind of, I try and be a little funny here and there. I'm really not that funny, but I don't like cynicism. You know, if you think something's not going to end well, I don't want to hear it. If you think something's a short versus a level, great. If you think something's not going to go up because it's a, you want to call it a pig, don't call it a pig. Say it's been trading relatively weak. I don't like this name. You know, ba 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 ba. Give a reason for it. Let's not be jerks here. We're not jerks here. We try not to be, at least. Um, anyway, I'll be back in about seven minutes or less to start trading the open and get situated. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and thanks for trying us for a week. I'll try and do what I can. I wish it was last week, but it is what it is. We do what we got to do as traders.